Hi, this is Mark from LongAmmoWatch.com, and uh, maybe it was a year ago, I'm kind of losing track of time. Uh, I did a video on kind of a state of the collection, a whole bunch of my dive watches, because I own a lot of dive watches. I love dive watches. Uh, so a lot of people would ask, hey, what else is in your collection? So there are a lot of watches. There are some that are not dive, majority are dive. So if, today I figured I'd take um, five or six pieces and show you them. They are definitely not dive watches, but it definitely does seem to be the watches that I wear the most often. I just dig the style. So anyway, without further ado, let's check out some of my personal collection. So I dug in deep to the watch box to find you six watches. Six, I don't know, six uh, that are not divers. Definitely not divers. Um, dress sport, not divers. Um, happy to find that not you know not of my own uh, <laughs> trying five of them are autos and one is quartz um usually with quartz they're generally dead because i don't wear these guys a lot um so i i guess i'll just kind of start on the on the left and go through them quickly not going to give you too too much information um this is my nomos dress watch i picked this one up actually when i carried nomos uh, that's going back a number of years. So it is 35 millimeters in diameter. You'll see I don't have notes on these. And it is uh, 6 millimeters thin. Crazy thin watch. It's a hand-winding auto. Beautiful baton hands and, you know, kind of an off-whitish ivory dial. Offset seconds and a date. Interestingly enough, the movement does not have a quick change date feature. You have to go between like 9 and 3 to change the date. Pain in the butt. But the movement is finished beautifully. It's a, so this is a Tangente. It's a three-quarter plate model. Um, look at the finishing on the winding gears as I wind it. Ah, oh, it's absolutely beautiful. Really, the, the movement that probably needs to be cleaned. I mean, there's a lot of oil bleed on uh, the plates. But if you really want to get in there, it's really something to look at and appreciate. I and mean, a lot goes into this. It's really beautiful looking. Um, but again, I, I don't wear it much. Uh, it comes on. I don't wear dress watches much. I wear divers all the time. Uh, shell cord advanced strap. Really cool though. Really nice dress watch. So keeping in the dress watch motif, I have a watch that's kind of special to me. I think I did this in a battery changing video once. Um, this is a Tourneau. It's a 14 karat gold dress watch. Might be the only um, precious metal watch I own. It is a scant 30 across and four millimeters thin. So just about a millimeter or so thicker than a battery. Um, it is, a, like I said, 14 karat gold case. My parents did get it to me for me for my birthday just before college graduation with love, mom and dad, November 1997. I rarely have ever wear this watch. Could probably use a new strap. I actually think this is a replacement strap already. Um, I did wear the junk out of it. It is a beautiful enamel dial. Uh, Romans, no loom anywhere, uh, but just a simple, classic, beautiful uh, dress watch. So if you want to classify this as the last dress watch, that would be fine by me. Uh, Orient Star Open Heart, a little bit larger than the other guys now. So now we're going to be at, let's see where we are. We're now at 39 millimeters in diameter. So it's a still, it's funny, you know, compared to these, it's tremendous. But in today's times, it's actually still a relatively small watch. Being an Orient Star, it is fully made in Japan. It has a beautiful power reserve meter. Uh, nice silver hands, good facets, applied indices, obviously exhibition kind of back and a, um, a see-through, what they call the open heart kind of movement. Uh, it is, it did come on a stainless steel bracelet from what I recall. I opted to put it on a, that's ox blood brownish strap. I thought it was more the dress part. There was a time when I wore it often, again, like a lot of my other watches, doesn't get much use. I would say when I sold these, the retails were three, four hundred bucks. I guess if you want no price, three, four hundred bucks. Um, back back in the day, about a thousand or eight or nine hundred or so. And similar on this one because it's, it's it was gold. Um, and then the Orient Star. Moving on to, I would say one of the more interesting watches in my collection. I've showed you other really cool watches like my Yes Digital watch, um, my Swatch Body and Soul Total See Through watch. Those are really cool. This one also gets the really cool award. This is a Givril GV2. They call it the eight ball watch for kind of obvious reasons. Seconds is 
in this rotating disk. There's no other indication of seconds on the dial, though. The hours are indicated by the aperture in the black wheel. Okay, it is an automatic, obviously. The date is indicated at the aperture at the top. It is a tad bit off-center, but I'm not. Neurotic doesn't really bother me. Uh, minutes are shown by that loop that's attached to this black disk. So I'll just change the time for fun so you can see what happens. See? And that's how it goes. And then the date flips when it gets to the next day. It comes on this uh, kind of beads of rice bracelet. Not really. Um, nice clasp. It's a great watch. This is actually one of the very few watches that I picked up uh, secondhand on a forum. I probably picked up about four or five watches secondhand um, years and years and years ago. Probably over, oh, I'll say over 15, but probably close to 15 years ago, actually. Uh, Gevril, uh GV2, GV2 April. It, is part of a, it was part of a limited edition series. Just a really cool, nifty watch. Another Orient, the Orient Speedster. Um, I love this watch. It's so cool. Uh, it's got that see-through dial, power reserve meter, slide rule, rotating slide rule around the outside. Bright orange dial. Uh, it did not come on this strap. It was, I don't remember if this was on a bracelet or a leather. Uh, I definitely put it on this strap, though, for... Um, for a little bit of visual fun um, originally black hands you can see the movement in action it is an open heart movement semi-skeleton if you will with the power reserve as i said the crown is on the left this crown is for the slide rule it is of course an exhibition case back it is a screw down crown it's not a diver i promise it's not just really cool they made the speedster i think it's called a speedster in many, many different color configurations. Um, I just thought the orange popped really nice. Uh, it just looks really cool. The bezel does not rotate. It's just there for, uh, you know, again, just for a little design. It's the internal bezel that rotates for the slide rule. Uh, I guess I could pull it and you could check it out. Let's see? There you go. And that will bring me to the last one. So this is a, a Diavis Reaper. The Reaper was an LE of, I want to say 50 pieces. I believe my company got 10 or 12. Uh, I One of the very few times I actually took a watch for myself. It came on a very thick un, and bulky leather strap. I definitely changed it to this. Uh, I don't know. I just loved the watch. I thought it looked so cool. I do not carry Diavis anymore. They did go dormant for a while. I did see their back, but I won't be carrying them again. Uh, let's see. So it is a, I think it's, is it DLC? I'm not even totally sure. Uh, it's definitely a Swiss auto. It's a black case. I think it is DLC. The, a lot of the stuff they do is, is DLC or their six steel, whatever they call it, uh, case, um, black dial. Then I love the 12, three, six and nine are done in black. And then the hands are done in the bright yellow. Not really black, though. You can still see them. It's not a ghost watch or a phantom watch, but you can still see the time. Beautiful crystal. Something that somebody once said to me, and I, I, I guess I never really saw it, and then once you see it, you can't unsee it. The bezel is a 24-hour bezel, and that's something that I've touched on many in many videos where I say it makes no sense to have a 24-hour bezel on a 12-hour watch. Well, this is one of those watches that has it, so kind of funny that it does. Uh, they did say originally that they would send me a new bezel for 12 hour markings on it. That never did happen. It doesn't really bother me. You can't see it anyway. Um, but still a beautiful watch. The Reaper was named after a drone, um, an autonomous drone. Uh, I was working in aerospace at the time. No, I had nothing to do with the drone. Um, not that I could tell you if I did, but I just thought just a nifty looking watch and actually a great name uh, for a watch. I don't know if you could see it. It's written right at the bottom, too, of the dial. Reaper Automatic, made in Germany. Beautiful watch. Uh, this one, I want to say, was around somewhere around a thousand bucks or so. Uh, but I really enjoyed it. Um, I think that's about it. That, that'll, that'll settle it. Uh, this has been Mark from LongIslandWatch.com showing you a couple of my personal watches that are not dive watches. Please like the video if you enjoyed it. Subscribe, channel if you've not done so. If you have any questions or comments, put them down below. And I'll be sure to address them as soon as I can. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.